There is something so romantic about the Georgian period in England. The clothes, the architecture, the literature, even the politics focused on liberation. During my undergraduate studies in art history, I traveled abroad to immerse myself in the neoclassical architecture in England. My previous studies in Latin and the classics prepared me for the day when I would stand outside the Royal Crescent and Bath and feel the power of ancient knowledge that was celebrated at the time of its construction. In my studies, I read about the infamous Grand Tour, where privileged young male scholars traveled across Europe as an educational rite of passage. In the 21st century, I have tried to create my own Grand Tour through my many travels. Having never taken a women's studies course before this one, I didn't think to question whether or not women also participated in this search for intellectual stimulation during the 18th century. Until now. After our first class, I turned to Google, curious if the historical push for women's education in England was similar to that in America. What I found was so interesting and exciting that I've chosen to write my final paper on the topic. But for now, let me introduce you to the Blue Stocking Society, and more specifically, Elizabeth Montague. The Blue Stocking Society was a group of women who gathered to discuss a variety of intellectual topics and to listen to guest lecturers to further their social and educational status. In the contemporary salon style, these women would meet in the home of a hostess, often played by Elizabeth Montague, a co-founder of the society in the 1750s. Elizabeth Montague was born in 1718 to wealthy parents. She spent much of her childhood with her grandfather, who was the librarian of Cambridge University, and from whom she received her informal education in the classics and literature. During this time, women were not allowed in the university, but the elite families instructed their young girls within the home. She was raised in a household where men and women spoke as equals and engaged in witty banter on a variety of subjects. In 1742, at the age of 24, she married Edward Montague. After several failed pregnancies and the death of her two-year-old son, Elizabeth and her husband lived in London, but they often spent time apart, with Edward traveling to his estates and Elizabeth traveling to Bath, Paris, Germany, and Scotland. In the 1750s, Elizabeth began inviting people over for literary discussions over breakfast, which by the 1760s had turned into huge assemblies for intellectual conversation, where gambling and drinking to excess were forbidden, contrary to the contemporary social gatherings. By 1770, her home on Hill Street had become the premier salon in London, and she also held similar events at her residence in the Royal Crescent in Bath. Crowned the Queen of the Blues, Elizabeth Montague was one of the few leading hostesses of the Blue Stocking Society, a patron for writers, and an author herself. During a time period when it was unladylike to be educated in the classics, to speak or to be an author of any kind, Montague is most well known for her essay on the writings and genius of Shakespeare compared with the Greek and French dramatic poets, which attacked Voltaire's criticism of the bard. Her letters remain as one of the greatest sources for capturing her character and opinions. She believed in the independence of women and women's education. She was an excellent businesswoman, taking over the family estates and coal mines when her husband died in 1775, and becoming one of the few women known to have owned property in the 18th century. In 1777, she commissioned James Stewart to build Montague House in Portman Square, where she continued to host her literary assemblies. She died in August of 1800, leaving her entire estate to her nephew, Matthew Robinson Montague, whom she adopted after the death of her brother. Elizabeth Montague is like my soul sister from another century. She was a traveler, a scholar, a literary critic, and a hostess for intellectual discord. Not that it compares in the least, but I run my own book club every month because I feel this need to gather together and discuss something that challenges our way of thinking. While I don't know if Elizabeth formally participated in the Grand Tour, I do know that her involvement in the Blue Stocking Society is just one example of women's desire and demand for intellectual stimulation during the Georgian period in England. Created using Powtoon.